Hi everybody, my name is Chris and this is Sojourns. Welcome back to the sewing room. Today we're doing another part in our continuing series of essential sewing tools. And so what we're going to talk about today is needles and thread. Those are some of the most important things we need, right? And you know, we spend a lot of money on our sewing machines. And so we want to make sure that we're not sacrificing quality of thread because there is a big difference. And also needles are really important. So let's start with needles and we'll talk about what I use and what I like and what needle you use for what type of project because that's really important. Depending on the weight of your fabric, the type of your fabric, the type of knit it is, whether it's a knit or a woven, all of those things will be factors in choosing your needle. So I sew mostly on baby locks. I have a baby lock brilliant for my regular sewing machine and I have a Triumph for my cover stitch and my serger. I also have a second backup sewing machine, which is a Husqvarna Viking D1, which is the first really good quality sewing machine I ever bought, and I love it. Viking no longer makes the D1, and it makes me really sad. They've gone up and made higher and higher levels of sewing machines, but this one sews great. On both of those machines, I use the brand of Schmetz needles. These are quality needles and I love sewing with them. And certain manufacturers will recommend certain needles that their machines are calibrated for. But I always use Schmetz. There's a couple of other brands that I would recommend. Let's see if I have them down here. Inspira is another very good needles. Now I only have this in the leather needle because that's what I had at my sewing machine store. And also organ needles are a very good brand and I do use these organ needles. These particular ones are serger needles and I'll get to those. So let's talk about needles and what we need for what sewing project we're going for. If you are sewing a woven fabric, in general, say you're making a button down blouse or a woven skirt and you're using chambray, something like that, or cotton or poly cotton, you'll want to choose the universal needle. Now, this is an 80-12 size, which is the mid-range, which is good for most of your projects. If you are using rayon chalet or something a little bit lighter, you might go down to the 70 needle. And you always do a test and see what stitch looks the best. If you're using a heavy, maybe canvas or something like that, then you'll go up to the 9014 needle. But you use a universal needle generally. Now, if you're sewing on something that's very lightweight, voile, a lightweight rayon chalet, a poly satin, then you would use a Microtex needle. Here's a package from a Microtex needle. It's very sharp and it will keep your stitches better. It will keep you from putting holes in your fabric, things like that. So pay attention to the size of the needle versus the fabric that you're using. If you are sewing knits on a regular sewing machine, this is, and you're sewing a jersey knit, for example, then you're going to want a Jersey ballpoint needle. And here's the Schmetz package for that. This is a multi-pack, which has different sizes. They have the 70 size, the 80-12, and the 90-14. So it's nice to have these around because you can do a test on your fabric and see if you have a very lightweight, tissue weight um, Jersey that doesn't have any too much spandex in it or anything like that, you'll want to use these, but you can test which needle size is the best. Lighter weight fabrics will take the smaller needle, mid weight fabrics the 80, and heavier knits the 90. If you are using a knit fabric that is high in spandex, athletic wear, swimwear, some people find this works really well on double brush poly too, you'll want to use a stretch needle. There's a, this is two different sizes. If you find when you're sewing, let's say talk about knits, and you're getting skipped stitches, 
you know, where you're going along and the stitch looks good and then there's an off stitch or two off stitches in a row, you'll see it and you know. 99% of the time, skip stitches are due to a needle problem. Either the wrong needle, the wrong size needle, and old needle, it could be many things. Your needle could be inserted improperly. That happens and make sure you check that. Just unscrew your screw and make sure your needle is up all the way and make sure that the flat part of your needle, I don't know if this is gonna be too far away, but hopefully not. The back of your needle is flat. Make sure that flat part of your needle is the facing the back of the machine so you're looking at the rounded part. And, and that's happened, I've seen people insert them incorrectly. Um, but generally, you get the skip stitches because it's either the needle is dull or it's the wrong type of needle. Uh, you, maybe you needed a stretch needle instead of a jersey needle. And you get used to that as you get familiar with your fabrics and how they sew with your needles. But don't get frustrated if you see these things happen. Just change your needle, change a different type, do a practice. And then, you know, you can have a notebook and write these things down. You know, for double brush poly, my machine likes this stitch with this type of needle. That's really handy. I don't know where I picked this up, but I might have gotten it from at all brands when I ordered like a hundred pack of needles, but it's the ABC Pocket Guide, and this is put out by Schmetz, and it lists the different needles and what they're used for, and the needles are color-coded, which is really great, because if you're switching projects, in between, like say one day you sew a knit blouse or a knit top, and the next day you wanna sew woven skirt. If you've only sewn two or three hours on that needle, it's probably still really good. It's usually eight or nine or 10 hours, you know, it depends. Um, and you take it out and you don't write down what needle that is, then you won't know and you have to get a magnifying glass out and look. But Schmetz color coats them. And so you'll be able to know when you look at that in your pin cushion what that needle's for. This is really handy. They also have these charts on the line. And if I can get a link for that, which I probably can, I'll put it down in the description box for you. And speaking of description boxes, before I go any further, thank you for liking and subscribing to this video and to this channel. It helps um, when you share, it helps bring more viewers in and we can have a lot more fun and a lot more tutorials get to be seen. A lot more information we can we can all use together. So thank you. So we were talking about knits. So your stretch needles come into three different sizes, depending on the heavy weight. If, if I'm sewing athletic fabric and it's like 310 GSM, that's grams per square meter. It's very thick, it's very wonderful, it's terrific. I'm gonna use a 9014 needle because it can handle it. But practice your particular knit on a scrap with your particular needle to get the best result. Now let's talk about serger needles. I use Schmetz needles in my serger. And again, depending on the fabric I'm using, I will choose a stretch needle or a jersey needle or a universal needle. Now I'm mostly sewing knits on my serger, so I mostly am using jersey or stretch needles in the appropriate size. But Look at your serger. Sergers require certain needles. There are overlock needles. Here is a pack of organ needles that I purchased. And if you can see in the back here, it says ELX705. That is the size and type of needle that Baby Lock recommends for my machine. This is an 8012 SUK needle. The SUK needle is for knits, and 8012 is the mid-range, so I use this on jerseys, double brush poly, things like that. But make sure you get, if your machine wants the ELX705, make sure you get that so that you can have the best result from your surging knits. Here's another one in 9014. Now, if you have a cover stitch, I have two machines, one I keep for cover stitch, one I keep set up for serger. The cover stitch requires a 9014 needle, no matter what weight of fabric you're using on cover stitch. Now there's a 9014 and there's a 9014 SUK, SUK being for knits. 
but you need the 9014 for at least for my serger and cover for my cover stitch my baby lock for a perfect stitch if you're not using a 9014 needle in your cover stitch and you're getting skip stitches switch it out to the 9014 and i bet you're going to have success suppose you don't have a cover stitch and you use a twin needle on your sewing machine they have here's a twin needle here i'm going to pull this out this is schmetz this is a universal needle so you'd use this on your wovens and here's what it looks like so it's together here and then you have your two spools of thread and you thread those and you get like a cover stitch look but it's a twin needle for hemming now there are differences in sizes on these twin needles and that refers to the space in between so you can get a very narrow double needle row or a medium or even a very wide. Let me see if I have a different size here just to show you. So I don't really use twin needles very much. Yes, I do because I have my cover stitch. This one here versus this one. Do you see how narrow these two needles are? And these are much wider apart. So that will give you the space in between. So if you're doing a doll or a very small like infant hem, you might go for something like this. And if you're doing just a regular standard hem, you might go for something like this. And there is an even wider one. So you have options there too with twin needles. So consult your manual and see if you have recommendations for your sewing machine. If you don't, Schmetz is a very, very good brand. And I would say a majority of people do use Schmetz needles and they're very good quality, so I wouldn't hesitate. Oh. I also really like to invest in quality thread. It makes a world of difference. So my go-to thread for my sewing machine is Guterman. My sewing machine loves it and I love it. It's a quality thread. Let me just show you, this is a big spool. You see this bigger spool? Like here's your standard spool or you've seen them in this configuration, but this has 1,093 yards on it. That's really nice because you're not constantly running out of thread. So. I purchased my Guterman thread on Wawak. Maybe you've heard of Wawak. I did sign up. I've been getting it for years, the catalog. Wawak runs their prices for an entire month. So when they have a sale, it runs for an entire month from the first of the month to the last day. I get a catalog every month and the sales are on the front and on the back. It's also online. You can also sign up for their online newsletter. I also get their emails. I love having the catalog. Yep. So inside where the different threads are, it also shows you all the different colors. Now granted, you, you can choose these colors from the catalog, but I decided to invest in the real color chart. Let me show you that. So you can purchase this Guterman thread chart, and I think it's about $24, and I feel it's worth the investment because here are all the thread colors. The thing is, it's real thread. So this is the exact color, not like in a catalog or on a computer screen where you really can't tell the exact color, but you can go if you have a certain project in mind. And I find it especially good for top stitching. You know, sometimes you want your top stitching to match because you want the beautiful look of the top stitching, but you may not want the thread to be the focal point. And sometimes you'll do the opposite. You'll top stitch in a different hue or even a different color altogether, and that's fine. But when you really want your thread to match, this was worth the investment. So when I'm ready to order, I pull this out and I know exactly what color I'm getting because some of these colors are really close, especially when you get into these tans and grays. And I mean, look how many colors of ivory are down there, like six, six of them? Yeah. So uh, it's worth the investment, and I, I do use this a lot. This Guterman thread that I buy, it's Mara 100 is the name, at Wawak. I get it when it's on sale, but even when it's not on sale, it's only about $2.50 for 1,093 yards. I think if you get the couple hundred yards of Joann's, it's $6 or something. And it's excellent thread. And then you also have a lot of people like Coates and Clark thread. It's okay, I don't really love it. Uh, this is poly thread, of course. Polyester for almost everything I sew, unless I am sewing with 100% cotton, 
Some people are making those microwave bowl dishes that you put in the microwave to keep your hands from getting hot, keep your bowl from getting hot. Or rice packs, you need 100% cotton thread for that because it goes in your microwave. Okay. Other threads. These are specialty threads. These are shimmery threads, specialty threads. These are great for some beautiful top stitching, mostly for edging. Um, my son got married two years ago, my younger son, and um, his wife asked me if I would make her veil, and I was really thrilled to do it. And so we used this gold, beautiful thread to do the tiniest rolled hem on the edge of her veil, and it was beautiful. So this worked out really well. There's also elastic threads. Here's two colors. There's black, there's red, whatever. I get these at Wawak. They come in a six pack for like $3. And you need a lot of them because you have to hand wind your bobbin for elastic thread. I'll talk about sharing on another tutorial. That's what you use this elastic thread for. But there's another, you know, the specialty thread. There's a lot of different specialty threads. Woolly nylon. Have you heard of woolly nylon? Woolly nylon is puffy and it's fat and it's very, very stretchy. So I use woolly nylon in my serger when I do a rolled hem. It fills it in really brilliantly and really beautifully. And it comes in solids, it comes in these variegated colors. You can do one color in your upper looper and one color in your lower looper. Works really, really great. You can use these decorative threads like this, or something like this, or even thicker threads in your chain looper. If you're doing decorative cover stitch on like a placemat or a runner or something like that, that's beautiful. The edges of things. All right, let's talk about serger thread. I recommend and like maxi lock. Good quality thread that I use in my serger. Again, I purchase it at Wawak. When it's on sale, it's about $2, 6,000 yards. And this cone fits really nicely on the serger. All kinds of colors. I never have a problem with Maxi Lock. Madeira is also a very good name of thread. When I bought my second serger, it came as a promotion where I received this pack here, this pack of thread with my serger. So it came in these colors and I got four cones of each. They're the shorter cones, but this was a really nice little perk, right? But it's very, very good thread. So I would recommend this as well, but you know, it's not as much thread. When you use woolly nylon, especially because it's puffy and it can come off the cone funny, or I use these smaller cones, here's a thread net. And all you do is take your thread net and put it over your thread. And then it will just, it comes off better and it doesn't get tangled or anything like that. And really, I mostly use it when I'm using woolly nylon because this can be really fussy. So that's what your thread net is for. Okay, so needles and thread, they're really important. Don't skimp on them. Change your needles when you have to. You know they're consumables. I always buy an extra pack. Joann's will often have 40 or 50% off on notions. When they do, stock up on your needles. You can get your needles at Wawak. For me, the catalog's a bit dicey on that because they have a lot of industrial needles and a lot of others. I generally find that when I get the notion sale at Joanne's, I just get two of each. I have a lot of needles. Another hint I wanna give you to remember which needle is in my machine. Behind me, under my sewing machines, I have mats that I made that have storage compartments. And so I, all I do is if I'm using this needle, I'll take one out or two, put it in my machine, and I store this pack right in one of those pockets so that I always know which needle's in my machine. And if I take it out for another project and it's still good, I'll just put it right back in there, take it, put it away, bring the new pack out. You can make a felt needle keeper. I've seen those. And then you just have a little list on the side and it has your size of your needle and the type of your needle. And if your needle is still good, you can just put it there so you know. But also remember that 
Schmetz color coats their needles, or you can use a magnifying glass to read the size on the side. And let's talk about storing your thread before we go, because it's really important. My husband's gonna take you around to your hand holding, so hopefully it'll be nice and steady. I'm gonna show you how I store my thread, because there are a couple things that will really help you get the most out of your thread. So spend your money wisely, get the needles that are correct, get the thread. You don't have to have matching thread for everything. You know, I like matching my serger thread. So I do have four spools of everything, but you don't have to. You know, if you just wanna get neutrals, I recommend white and black for your lights and darks, and then gray. Here's a gray in the Madeira thread. I also have it in Maxi Lock. But gray is a great neutral. It'll go with everything. And I would get a light gray and a dark gray. So now you have light gray, dark gray, black and white. That'll take you everywhere. Some people like to just get the neutrals and then get one or maybe two colors. One is fine. Just use it in your left needle since that's the one that's going to be seen if you see anything. Um, and the other, you know, the looper threads and stuff are on the inside. So that's a way if you, you know, if that fits your pocketbook better, that's great. Saving money is a great idea. Okay, so let's talk about how to store thread because that's very important. So here I am standing in my double closet in my sewing room. And what I've done is I have hung this June Taylor thread rack on the inside of my closet. And I just went to the dollar store and I got this over the door coat rack and it worked perfectly. And the reason I have it inside my closet door is because dust and light are detrimental to thread. So I leave the door closed when I'm not in here looking for my muslin fabrics, which I store in here and things like that, or getting thread. And this way the dust doesn't collect on here. If you are hanging your thread rack on your wall, I recommend you get some clear vinyl or a little sheet or something to cover it over most of the time. Most people don't wanna do that, so this is a good alternative. So here I have some of my threads. You know that I get my threads from Wawak. And I just wanna show you also about how I store my bobbins. I'm gonna take one of these off here. So this is a thousand yards of the Guterman thread. And here's my bobbin. These little doohickeys here, I'm gonna take one off and put this down here. This is called a handy bob, and I love this. But here's the thing, if you're getting this size spool, they're a little too big. If you're getting, if you're using these, the handy bob fits right in. But my husband works at a lab and he had some tubing. And so we cut this little tubing here and it made it perfect. So now, I can push this in and the little ends of the bobbin go inside this hole and clip so that you don't have threads hanging down. And now when I go to get my thread, I have my bobbin already. And the ones that don't have bobbins, I haven't used yet. I love this setup, I love both of those. I'm gonna open the other closet and maybe Mark can come around just real quick. It's just a quick shot. With that same rack from the dollar store, and at the top, I've stored my specialty threads. Sparkly threads. This is elastic thread for shearing, which I'll do a tutorial on soon. I have some invisible thread. These bobbins down here don't have really a coordinating thread because I haven't, because I ran out or because they have very little on them. I'm not going to put that in my sewing machine because I'll run out of thread right away. But what I can do is when I'm hand basting or hand sewing something, I'll use it up that way. So store your thread where light and dust won't attack it. Okay. Storing cone thread for your serger. You can certainly get racks to store them on, but I just don't have the room for that. I find these clear plastic, this one's not clear, it's green, three drawers, perfect for them. The height is right. So what I've done, and I'm gonna come down here because it's easier for the cameraman, but I store them in colors. You know, this is my maxi lock for my serger and I just store them in colors in here. I have them underneath of my tables because I stand and here's some more and I have like all my blues in this drawer. I keep my black and white up top. This is how I store it. The ones that I use most, I keep at the top. So what I use most is black and white and gray because gray is a great neutral. And then I kind of just, 
done whatever colors I like. Here's my tan family, my light greens. Down here are some of my neon colors and reds, things I don't use quite as much. But if Mark can pull back, maybe. You can see that I'll store them underneath the table. These usually are underneath the table. Anyway, the point is that keeping light and dust out of your cone thread is also really important. So I hope this helped you understand more about your needles, more about your thread, and you'll enjoy your sewing even more with professional results. Thanks for joining me on our Essential Sewing Tools Part 2 or Part 3. I'm not sure where we are. Thanks for subscribing and liking and visiting me. Until next time, happy sewing.